Hi there, this is Ralph, and I wanted to go over real quick the basic interface for Adobe Flash CS4. Uh, CS5 is actually going to be out uh, pretty soon, but I'm still going to be using CS4 for a while. I've already created a new blank Flash file here uh, using uh, ActionScript 3, so it's just all the default settings. Otherwise, it's just File New and Flash File ActionScript 3. There we go. And I just wanted to go over some of the key parts here. Um, I'm currently using the classic workspace layout. Notice up here at the top here I can go from animator if that's what I want to focus on, designer, essentials, kind of strip down there, and I'm going to go back over to classic. Basically it just kind of repositions the key elements of the workspace depending on what you might use most often and you can customize your own workspaces and save them as necessary over here on the left got my toolbar across the top pretty standard menu bar I have my timeline my working area or stage and over here on the right I have my properties panel or properties inspector the properties panel gives you specific information about the active object. So if I click on my blank stage right now, the properties panel is giving me information about my stage. I can see that it's uh, s uh, the scripting, it would be using Action Script 3 if I use some. Uh, it's set up for Flash Player 10 or Profile Default. And this is a good piece of information here, frames per second. I'm set to 24 frames per second which is actually pretty fine and it's, it's kind of fast. If you knew you were doing an animation for a web, you might actually scale this down a bit to, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 frames per second or something like that. The more frames per second, then the smoother your animations will look, but also the bigger the file sizes are. So it all kind of depends on how you're going to use your animation ultimately. But for the web, you want to go as small as possible without really messing up the quality of your animation. So I'll jump back over to 24 frames per second. And of course my stage size is 550 pixels by 400 pixels tall. And that's certainly um, adjustable. And then you have your basic stage background color. It defaults to white here, but I could change this out. So if I knew that I was going to be doing a scene, which is going to be an outdoor scene, maybe I'll start off with a light blue stage. One of the first things you're going to want to do is start to experiment with the various tools available to you. And we'll have a whole bunch of tutorial videos and things like that, and there's some already out there that are certainly fantastic about using these tools specifically. But there's a bunch of tools on here. Some are new to CS4, but uh, for the most part, they should be familiar to you if you've used previous versions of Flash or if you've used even uh, image editor programs like Photoshop. So I've got some selection tools up here. 3D Rotation Tool, that's a new one in Flash CS4. Lasso, Selection Tool, so if you need to select some unusual shapes. Pen Tool, Text, Line. If I hold this down, I can see I've got some various shapes here. Rectangles and ovals, primitive rectangles, primitive ovals. Basically the primitive version of these, they really they give you some sizing options that are not uh, default in the basic rectangle and oval merge shapes. And we'll talk more about that in another video. Pencil tool, paintbrush, deco tool, that's a new one for CS4. The bone tool is a really cool one, that's for new in CS4. Paint bucket for fills. Eyedropper to select colors, erasers, hand tool for moving things around a little bit easier. Zoom, zooming in clearly. We've got our stroke and our fill. Stroke is basically the border of an object. Um, quick little example here, currently I have no stroke, so I will put in a pinkish color stroke, and for fill, let me do a, uh, I hope that's too similar, how about a nice green fill, let me go to, uh, I'll go to my oval tool, and let me s jump over to my properties panel, let me increase the thickness of my stroke a bit, there we go, so I've got a green fill, and that orangish pinkish color stroke and if I didn't have a fill and I drew then I would just have the stroke and of course just the opposite if I have no stroke then I'll just get the fill so that comes in handy 
switching colors, and then we can convert from an, a drawn object to a merge shape. More about that later on. And snap two objects. So helps you when you're working with multiple shapes to kind of connect them together. So that's our toolbar, and you'll become really good at using all these individual tools. Uh, some of the ones that I find the trickiest to use are like these pen tool. You know, if you get really good at the pen tool, then you can do a lot of fancy stuff. And as I can see, let me go to my selection tool, which is keystroke V. And I'll just go ahead and click on a merge shape that I have over here, this oval. And my properties are for that oval. Currently, there's the green fill, there's the no stroke. Um, I can change the color out if I choose to. There we go. So I've changed that, changed that. And then, really, the other critical component is our timeline. And I'm not going to get too into the timeline in this little intro video but it's something you're going to certainly spend a lot of time working with. Timeline, by the way, and the motion editor. More on that later on, too. But the timeline is how we can keep track of things and their movement. So currently, I'm on, I'm on frame one of one layer. Most flash animations you create will be made up of multiple layers. So I've got one layer here, and I've got three objects on there. If I jump over to, let's say, layer 20 or I'm sorry frame 24 and I make what's called a keyframe a keyframe is a pivotal or important frame in your timeline there's a keystroke for that F6 or I could go to insert timeline keyframe and my little keyboard shortcuts not showing up so just kinda of trust me on that one uh, F6 is the keyboard shortcut for keyframe so let me let me click away, go to frame 24, I'll press F6, there we go, so now I have a keyframe. And let me change this merge shape. Oh. There we go. There we go, so let me select this pink oval here on frame 24, so I'm on frame 24, my pink oval is selected and let me change its color to a bright blue so there we go so on frame one my three shapes have a pink oval on frame 24 my three shapes I have a blue oval and then I'll just right click in here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a create a shape tween and you can see that my oval changes from pink to blue as it goes through the timeline if I press my enter key you can see that transition there so that's a basic shape tween we'll do a lot more of that later on but the timeline points out the beginning stage and the ending stage and tweening is the process that Flash takes care of takes care of for me in the middle. Basically it creates all the little changes frame by frame and this takes place over one second so therefore each frame is 1 24th of a second. Some other parts of the timeline on here, um, of course we can easily make a bunch of new layers here. There's a new layer button right there and you can create multiple layers. Generally, it's better to have more layers than less layers. And then I've also been able to control um, onion skins. This is going to make a little bit more sense once we start having some frame, some animation on there. Uh, so onion skins, the current frame that I'm on, of course, my frames per second, and how much time has elapsed. So the timeline you're going to get much better at, and Clearly, this is just a little one-second animation. You can imagine uh, the timeline is going to be extremely long and stuff like that once you start having more stuff on there. And there's other tools we can use to make this a little bit easier to manage. You can make folders for items in your uh, for layers within your timeline. So this is just the basics for the interface here. One of the first things you'll probably start to experiment with are the various drawing tools and then making some basic animations out of those. Uh, shape tweens are just one of the several kinds of animations. You'll do shape tweens, motion tweens, uh, frame by frame animations. So those are the three most common. And with those you can do some really cool and complex things. So that's all for now and we'll check out some more features later on.